All right, boys and gals. Um, the wild card round is here. <laughs> and it is going to be a fun time for all of us here. And I am so excited for the NFL playoffs. 12 teams have made it. Eight will be playing on this first weekend. The other four have buys. And it's going to be a fun time. So in the early game on Saturday, January the 4th, it will be another appearance for the AFC South on ESPN in the wild card round and ABC with the simulcast. It'll be Buffalo, the number five seed in the AFC, taking on the number four seed, the Houston Texans. And man, oh man, oh man, this is going to be a good game. The Texans have not looked good. They got steamrolled. I don't care if it was their second team or not, but they got steamrolled by Tennessee. They have just been looking inconsistent as all hell in the last few games. Buffalo, they did lose their last game of the season. Um, they did lose against New England as well. Uh, but they, they are riding high going into the playoffs. They want to be able to get to that second round. And it depends on, you know, who in the world. It, it, it depends on what. It depends, it depends on Josh Allen um, and Deshaun Watson. It depends on these two guys, whether they can throw the ball down the field, whether they can use their athleticism to run the ball down the field. It all comes down to them. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that goes on with their core players and stuff, but, you know, it ultimately comes down to these two. And I don't really make predictions, so I'm not going to give you who's going to win this game and everything like that. But if Buffalo wins, Buffalo will more than likely be heading up to, and I do believe the lowest seed goes to the number one. So if Buffalo does win, and they're the, um, they're the, um, Highest seed remaining just in case uh, Tennessee wins. They'll either be going to Kansas City, more than likely, or Buffalo. Or at Baltimore. They'll be either going to either or. It just depends. Same thing with Tennessee taking on New England. New England lost themselves out of a wild car by, by losing to the Miami Dolphins in the last week of the season. New England has not looked great at all this year. They have not looked like the team in the past. This team has also gone through some things. They've shuffled around wide receivers a lot. You know, Mohamed Sanu, Antonio Brown, just to name a few. Um, but Tom Brady's still here, and it is January, so you know what the Patriots may be working up some magic. But never fear. Ryan Tannehill and Derrick Henry are here. <laughs> And that is the late game on Saturday at 7 p.m. So, you know, CBS has that game. And it's going to be fun. Um, but never fear, you know, could Tennessee beat New England? You know, Tennessee does beat New England. They'll be going to Baltimore. They'll be going to Baltimore outright. So, you know, but if not, if New England starts, you know, start acting up, uh, hey, you never know. <sighs> <clears throat> so, um, the key for Tennessee is to get, get Ryan Tannehill, who, who will probably throw a 50-yard bomb touchdown to A.J. Brown anyway. Um, get him and Derrick Henry going for New England. They just got to get in sync on offense. Their defense is pretty damn good, um, but the offense has to get going. Here we go with Sunday. The NFC games have been put on Sunday for us all to view, and starting at noon, it will be the New Orleans Saints at home, who got shafted basically out of a bye, um, and Minnesota, the Minnesota Vikings, you know, they it's a rematch of that NFC Championship from or, or that, in a, yeah, I want to say it was like that NFC Divisional Playoff game. NFC Championship. It was a it was a rematch of that playoff game from a while back, and it 
this should be another good one. You know, the Vikings have not looked the greatest the last couple weeks. New Orleans has just been blowing teams out. It doesn't matter if the teams aren't the greatest in the world, but they've been blowing teams out. So, you know, you can't count both these teams out either. Uh, if one has a bad game, it's going to be a good one. I guarantee you, Kirk Cousins. If he wants, if he wants to be the guy that can, you know, be like this franchise quarterback, he has to prove that he can win. Drew Brees is just trying to go back to a Super Bowl. I mean, this guy definitely deserves to go back to a Super Bowl, and he, if he gets rolling, he gets all those weapons rolling. You know, Kamara, Taysom Hill, Jared Cook, Michael Thomas, man. Um, New Orleans could be hitting on up to, you know. Whoever, whatever scenario that will be, uh, as far as um, you know, where they go next week. Um, and then finally, at three thirty in, in the Central Time Zone, at four thirty in the East, it will be Seattle going up to Philadelphia. Philadelphia, as we know, has just had a litany of injuries. Seattle has not played very well at all. Um, they, they just haven't played well down the stretch. They lost to the Cardinals. They, they lost to the Warriors. Yeah, it was a little fluky at the end, but ultimately they, 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 had to fight. they had to fight all the way back to, be, to try and beat the 49ers. They just couldn't do it. They add Marshawn Lynch now and Turbin and other guys in the backfield to offset their injuries at halfback. Uh, but Philadelphia, do not count them out. Please just do not count them out at all. If you count out Philadelphia, you know, it, it's not it's not gonna be fun. It's not gonna be a fun time. I don't, I don't see why it's any given it's any given day the NFL. Um, nine and seven teams and eight seven and eight and eight teams that end up going to the playoffs and winning their division and stuff like that. They definitely had to fight for that playoff game and stuff like that, you know, and all that good stuff. And the Eagles definitely earned their spot. They earned their way in to the postseason. They have some inexplicable losses. They have some pretty damn good wins. Um, the Philadelphia Eagles, if they can win with practice squad players and wide receivers not even getting to 500 yards, in the regular season, that they could, you know, they 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 could, you know, very well be like, yo, uh, hey, we gonna do something, we gonna do something, we going, we we'll going somewhere. But you know, Seattle and Philadelphia, that's gonna be a great game. It'll be on NBC. The Minnesota New Orleans game will be on Fox, and it it just depends on who wins and whatnot. So you know. <laughs> Might as well go over the divisional round as well. So next Saturday, um, NBC is carrying the, San, the game in San Francisco, and Fox is carrying the game, or rather CBS is carrying the game in Baltimore next Saturday at 7. Um, and, you know, on Sunday, there's a little bit of a time shift this year due to, you know, I don't, I don't know why, but, you know, it, it beats me, but, you know, on the 12th, it'll be whoever, whoever has, like, the highest remaining seed or something like that, they'll be going to Kansas City, and that'll be on CBS as well. And then on Sunday on Fox, it'll be at 5.30 or 6.30, depending on, you know, wherever. And it'll be, you know, the game in Green Bay in the cold. So, and, you know. Uh, as far as the other four teams go, the Baltimore Ravens are the best team in the NFL. They have some, they have very few weaknesses, if any, right now. They are looking like the team that could potentially win the Super Bowl. They could just run away with it. Uh, but they do have some problems. It's just hard to find them right now because they've won so many games in a row. And everything like that, and they played so good with Lamar Jackson. Uh, the 49ers, on the other hand, have some problems. This team 
really gets inconsistent at times. Jimmy Garoppolo does, you know, you know, he does do some great things. George Kittle has his basically his wide receiver and stuff like that. Debo Samuel as well. Um, you know, those guys, they are very productive. But when Jimmy G and the 49ers just do not have a good day, they do not have a good day. Um, Kansas City, they've been quietly under the radar for a while now. Um, they were just, they just quietly, you know, gotten back in the heat of things and just doing everything they can smoothly, you know. Um, Kansas City definitely has some weaknesses, more than likely on the defense as it, ha- as it was last year. Uh, but Patrick Mahomes is just going to slate the ball to Tariq Hill and Miko Harmon and all them guys, you know, and it's going to be, and if, and if that goes on, you know, it's going to be a long day for whoever comes up to Kansas City. And the Packers, on the other hand, they look like one of the weakest two seeds in a long time. Aaron Rodgers, you know, somehow, some way, the Packers got the 13-3, and three, got the number two seed, and they just have not looked great at all, you know. Uh, they, you know, but you know they, they do have some bright spots, and especially a guy that I have really grown to love over the season, and that is Aaron Jones. Uh, that dude can play, man. He is definitely um, a guy that I'd say like most improved player of the year. That is a guy. Like if like if like if the NFL awards were today, I'd say this guy with the most improved player of the year award. He is that damn good. Um, but the Packers, you know, they still have some things going on uh, as far as other weapons go and defense. It, it's just it's just kind of eh. It's there. The Packers can play with you, so you know you can't underestimate them either. Um, but yeah. That's my preview of the wild card and the playoffs as a whole. Good luck to these 12 teams that made it to the postseason. And, you know, it's going to be a fun time. So that being said, everybody, um, this will be the last video of the day. And aside from the Orange Bowl recap tonight. Um, but, yeah, it's going to do it. See you guys um, tonight for the Orange Bowl recap.